Nice one, Jim. All right, dude. Oh, did you see that? Oh. Oh. Nice. The scales of justice, man. The scales of justice. Check your drags, check your bloomers. <laughs> Rhode Island would be easy to overlook as a headboat fishing destination, but its small size is massively disproportionate to the state's fishing potential. The Ocean State is a must visit destination for fishermen seeking large stripers, jumbo tog, and the kings of summer, doormat fluke. The Francis fleet has been ferrying fishermen to Rhode Island's fluke grounds for the last 45 years. As Anthony DeCicci and I board the Gale Francis on a warm mid-August morning, we're headed for the storied waters south of Block Island, where the fluke, in the midst of their late summer migration offshore, have been fattening up on sand eels and squid. <laughs> So whenever I'm going fluke fishing, I like to bring at least two outfits with me. And I'm gonna bring a mix of conventional and spinning gear. And the reason for that is, one, when I'm fishing heavier rigs, you know, you know, even if it's a three-way rig, a chicken rig, I'm more comfortable with a conventional setup. If I'm casting jigs, especially if I'm gonna be on the upcurrent side of the boat where I'm trying to flip the jig up current, I want a spinning rod and reel. Not only is that a lot of fun to fight fish on the spinning gear, but it's also more effective for working the jig and you're a little bit more efficient with that. So having both for both options, depending on which side of the boat you are, you're on, that's the best idea. Now I have these rods rigged with different lines. On this conventional setup, I have Seaguard Tactics and that's a uh, four strand, a four carrier braided line. So that means all braided lines are, are made up of multiple strands woven together. This Tactic has four and the, Part of the benefits of the four carrier is one, it's more abrasion resistant. Two, it's very strong. It's strong at even a smaller diameter. And um, three, really good notch strength. It has a lot of texture to it. Now what I have on my spinning setup is Seaguar Smackdown braided line. And that's an eight carrier braid. So that has eight strands woven together. That creates a smoother line. That's gonna be better on spinning reels when you wanna be able to cast further. You know, there's gonna be less friction, less resistance when you cast. The trade-off is that that eight carrier line is gonna be a little bit less abrasion resistant. Now that seems counterintuitive because you'd think more strands, more abrasion resistant, but because there's eight strands making up the same diameter here as four strands on the tactics, that means they're thinner strands, more likely to break as they rub against rocks or against the boat. So that's where you lose the abrasion resistance with the four carrier braid, I'm sorry, with the eight carrier braid, but it's a good trade off. So both of these setups, I've got about eight to 10 feet of Seaguar inshore fluorocarbon leader in 30 pound test. I like the 30 pound test because it does give me, you know, a little extra strength and it's still a thin diameter in case of fluke or being a little bit line shy. On this setup here, I have a Tsunami ball head jig. I'm gonna pair that with a big scented artificial like a Berkeley Gulp or a Spro uh, Wavetail Grub. And then up here, I have a Tsunami glass minnow that's gonna act as my teaser. On my conventional, I've got a pretty standard high-low rig. So all I have is a surgeon's loop for the sinker, two dropper loops to accommodate the hooks, and I've uh, jazzed them up a little bit. I put a rivet, a bucktail rivet teaser above the hooks a little extra splash of color, make the bait look a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna, when I'm fishing this rig, I'm gonna bait it up with a squid and spearing, a fluke classic, and uh, hope I can get some fish for the cooler. I was excited to learn that we'd be fishing around the Block Island Wind Farm, the first of its kind in the United States. The five offshore wind turbines were erected in 2016 
and since then, they've been generating enough electricity to power Block Island with some left over to send to the mainland. While these turbines, and the many more coming to southern New England waters, have been a hot-button issue among the general public, anglers can't help but liken their fish-attracting potential to the oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. Many fishermen believe the massive structures are already having a positive effect on the local bottom fishing, but it's still too early to tell what the long-term effects will be. Are you starting with a rig or a jig? I'm going with a rig. If you're starting rig, I'm going to start with the jig. Selects. <laughs> the Jimmy Fee Selects. They're almost as big as the ones the boat provided. Good luck. We don't get the small fish. We'll get the bigger fish. There's much debate over the best spot on a party boat. The answer depends on a number of variables, including the target species, the boat itself, and the weather conditions. Like many of fishing's unanswerable questions, it really comes down to personal preference. For fluke fishing, I like the pulpit, because if the trip isn't too full, I can fish on both sides according to how the boat is drifting, and I have more room to cast a jig underhand and get it away from the boat. Ooh, saw that. Back on him, man. Nice sea bass, buddy. Let's take one of them, man. Be very happy with That's one a of big those. Fish. There we go. Oh, was it? Am I hung up? Well, looks like I'll be jigging, Jim. <laughs> I didn't. Gonna abandon your convictions that quickly? No, I just got hung up. Oh boy. Lost everything too. I just dropped one. Well, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> another another tail of sculpt to add to the bucket. You want to get a weight on that? I got a scale. With all the fins and everything, man, they are deceptively yeah. light. Three and a half. There we go. Oh. Oh for two. Oh for two. There we go. See that. Let's go, boys. Check your drags. Check your bloomers. <laughs> there he is. Are you kidding me? That bottom? Again. Did he get you in it or was it a fish at all? No. Jesus. Well, I'm out of the game already. <laughs> That's a, a rough start, man. That's a real rough start. Well, the FG held. Oh. Oh boy. Tail's gone. Twice already. Twice? Both rods I lost. I've lost both uh, my jig rig and my, my uh, chicken rig. Back in the game, Jim. Didn't take long. It's only a two minute penalty. Oh, no teaser. It's a bold move. See him catching sea bass. Big fan of the teaser with sea bass. A little fluke, there we go. And there you go. Yeah, there's a fish. It's nice to not, not have bottom for once. Don't look like much of a fish though. You mind your own business there, Jim. Hooked the rock pile twice. <laughs> now, I'm on to the sea bass. And we're gonna swing that oh. guy. Oh, fuck. I can't keep him pinned, man. I cannot keep him pinned. Jimmy's fishing rubber hooks. Nice sea bass, I'm gonna let that one go. Offer it up to the fish gods so I can get a large. I 
I want to hook a monster. I want to think it's bottom, and then feel it the head shakes. The best. There we go. We're on bottom. We're fishing. We're fishing. Yeah, fluky, 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 fluky. <laughs> Thanks. That'll wake you up. Shifted it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, whenever you're over rocky bottom for fluke, you don't want to let the sinker or the jig drag. That's the uh, it's a recipe for hanging up. So always keep it bouncing, always keep it moving. That helps you keep it over the structure. If you just sit there, hold the rod like this, you're eventually going to drag it into a rock in this rough bottom. So always want to be paying attention to the depth, letting out and taking up line, and just keep it moving. Keep it moving is going to be better for attracting the fish anyhow. <clears throat> Gotta get some meat in the box, Cheech. I got mouths to feed. Namely mine. Nice fluke. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> he thought about surrendering his fillets. Oh. That's tough what? luck. Sometimes on a real fast drift like this too, Cheech, like the, just like a standard three-way rig. Yeah. You know, no, no. No extra hardware. There we go. Oh. Jimmy, what's up with the, the rubber hey, hooks today, man? Today. It's a, it's, I'm rusty. It's my first loop trip of the year. I'll take whatever I. Here we go. Feels like a sea bass. Sea bass? Uh, I would guess yes. Short sea bass at that. A little headache for him. A little bit too short. So, put him back to me. I love the different color. Cheech, I love how they get. I cook yeah. that little streak of green. Yeah, so hooking, they're, they're kind of soft baits. They don't stay on the hook that well. But you can get a little extra time out of them. You go through the top of the skull like that. And that's going to be the, the part of the bait that holds the hook best. But still, it's a one and done bait. You, know, you get a bite generally that's it's going to be gone. Yeah. Oh, fuck. The fluke or bass? I see bass. Didn't have them on long enough to tell, Jim. I can't believe it's, it's August. It's my first fluke trip of the year, man. This is, it's a disgrace. I don't even know myself. Good action so far, though. Oh, uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it feels like it. Huh. The telltale fluke head shakes. Huh. Nice one, Jim. All right. Dude. After drifting over some rough bottom that was predominantly inhabited by sea bass, we begin to hook some fluke. Oh, yeah, man. Awesome. My first Block Island fluke. Congrats. There we go. Beautiful keeper uh, Block Island fluke. First one of the day, filling the uh, the empty cooler, always a good feeling. So, uh, we can put a tape on this, but it's easily over 18 inches, which is the minimum size. You're allowed to keep four uh, fish, four fluke over 18 inches a day, and uh, I've got three more to fill, but 
Right now I'm a happy camper. Oh yeah, dude, he's well over 18 inches. Good one, man. Right, <laughs> we'll move the Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice long strip of squid cheese and then uh, two spearing. Different color everything. While sea bass aren't known for being selective, Fluke can be very particular about color and presentation. Midway through the morning, without a keeper to his credit, Anthony starts switching things up. Oh, Sandy will color it. I like it. The first few flew coming over the rail have been spitting up sand eels, so Anthony adjusts his presentation to match these slender bait fish. Yeah. There it is. It's a biscuit. No, it's not. It's a it big is. sea bass. Sea bass. The keeper, though. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. I'm not head for the dinner table. There we go. Eighteen inches. One spearing survived. He's waiting for me. That's going to do a number on my hearing. Huh? Pringles are a perfect boat snap. They're very contained. You can shovel them in if you have to without touching them. Really, they tasted good. I see is a spearing floating as I drop down. Uh, no, I dropped one in. Oh, did you? Yeah, I think you're all right. <laughs> Good. Oh, you didn't use two? I, I did, I already had one on there. I like two, I like the insurance of two. Yeah. I feel like you missed the first bite. Maybe this. Maybe there's a second spearing still on there. Or should I? I like one? the spearing with the squid over the top. Yeah, dude, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. I still don't understand why it, why it works. Two squid strips, four spearing. Oh, did you see that? Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. That's a fluke. Ooh. Huh? Ooh, come on, stay on there. Nice. Nice net job, buddy. Oh, man, that's a good one. I'll uh, take it. That's bigger than mine, damn it. That's what I came for. Good job, man. Thank you. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I'm, I'm just cleaning up. Blue, blue, white, and green right now, Look at that. That's a nice fluke. Is, yeah, he, uh, he ate like that good. How aggressive these fish are. We'll keep it. All take. right. Come on, put that one in. Awesome. Hello, boy, Jim. Here we go. Did you just knock me out of pool contention? Oh, awesome, man. Thank you. Throwback sea bass. Keep a fluke. Let's go. Up, 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 I'm all tangled up. Little spin, little, little fall over the side. Pretty nimble for a big man. Ah, they used to call me Twinkle Toes to Chi Chi. Up, go over the side. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, man. First time uh, food fishing Block Island. I'm impressed by the quality. Yeah, um, so I fished Block Island a few times in the Fluke Teeth Puke Tournament, and the first year we really did well. But we were fishing a lot tighter to the island, and uh, 
the, the fluking was great. A lot of seven pounders, six pounders. Really? I think we had one up to eight pounds. And then um, the second year we fished it, we did terrible. I was gunning for the shit fish uh, Calcutta. We won it the first year, it was awesome. It's like, it was almost three grand. Really, for the trash fish? Yeah, for, for like a, I think it was a 12 pound dogfish won it. <laughs> and then the next year I had like a 13 pound skate and I lost to some guy that showed up in a uh, taxi cab with a five gallon pail with a 14 pound skate in it. I'm like, well, oh, probably came off a dragger, buddy. That's a real big skate. And it was over four grand that Calcutta that year. As the morning turns to afternoon, the tide picks up and fishing improves with even more fluke hitting the deck. Oh, oh very little drag slippage. Oh man, that's there good. You go, that's good Jim. There you go, Jim. There you go, Jimmy. Stay buttoned, stay buttoned. Jimmy Fee, everybody. You can put that net back. He, he takes like two and a half hours to reel a fluke in. <laughs> All right. He's, a, he's one of those gentle. Yeah. He's, he's one of those. He's like look, it's a soft he's touch. He's got soft hands. Oh, nice. I don't want them to even know they're coming toward the surface till they're in the net. Oh, come on back. It's good. Come on back. Come on back. Come so on. You don't back. lose fish. I lose a lot of fish. <laughs> <laughs> I see Brown. Keep him down. Oh, he picked him up too soon. You see that? Error. <laughs> Saved by the net, man. Thank you, man. Nice fluke, buddy. Oh, yeah, dude. We got our nice little catch here. Dude. I really like the feel of these rods, man. The fluke, and they are great little fluke rods. They don't, uh, not too fast and nice and moderate, too. You feel like they keep the bend in them. Yep. Keep the line tight. Well, thank you very much. Would be keeper number three if he makes it, dude. I think so. Yep, so he's got it. Zero. It's over 20 inches. That's three for me. I'm one away from my limit. All right. Nice job, Cal. What's on my back, Adam? See, biscuit. Nice one. can go in the box. It took us a little bit to get a fish in the cooler, man. That's always an uneasy time. That's when tensions are high. It was like, a, just, I mean, obviously the fun is coming out and fishing and, uh, and all that, but the, you know, one of the side goals at least. I'm going to uh, heed the captain's warning in a minute and put on my bibs and jacket. I can't believe you left my gear on the car, Jim. <laughs> I said, grab everything. That's, uh, I forgot I forgot that I'm your guardian. My mule. Jimmy's my mule. Yeah, I almost <laughs> threw out my shoulder. I didn't realize you'd put all your sinkers and jigs and shit in my bag. <laughs> well, I get wet if you don't have to. And you can just get wet dog to Chi Chi. I've been that guy before. These are the uh, Grundon's Gore-Tex Gambler series. A little bit lighter weight, perfect for this summertime fishing. So, you know, even after, though we're out here in August, you can put this on, it's still breathable. Still gonna be really comfortable even in the uh, warmer weather. Some of the very best baits you'll ever use for fluke will be the ones you procure in the midst of fluke fishing. What's that on the surface? See the bait coming out of the water? Chubs? Oh, I did. I saw it. They didn't cheat. Right Throughout the morning, we drift through schools of chub mackerel, which can't seem to resist our fluke rigs. Favoring the fresh mackerel over the frozen squid and spearing, Anthony and I slice a couple mackerel in strips and add them to our fluke rigs, and it works. It works so well, in fact, that I hooked a strong contender for the pool money with a piece of cut chub mackerel. The battle was won for the ages. Ripping drag, dramatic calls for the net, last-minute escape attempts, and near sabotage by DiCicci. But you won't see any of that here. 
a napping cameraman, and a malfunctioning GoPro have robbed us of that footage. So we had a great day here on the Gale Francis. Uh, by some, I don't know, amazing twist of fate, the two contenders, two top contenders for the pool money are my fish and Anthony's fish. They both went into the same cooler. I notched a quarter of the tail of my fish. He took so, an ounce and a half off his fish and I'm gonna win by a half ounce. Precious milligrams I removed from my fish so I could identify it. So we're gonna take that back to the scales of justice in a minute, see which one of us is gonna take home the pool money. I didn't think I didn't think we'd ever catch actually win the pool on one of these trips. Dude, someone's probably sandbagging in the back and has like an eight there, and a half pounder back there. There's something. somebody who's pulling out a big fish. Yeah. But uh yeah, no, it's pretty cool to be in the mix. I think I, Jimmy might have it by a little bit. Mine so, seemed to be super fat though, so I don't know. We're gonna see. But anytime you have the chance, like that was always exciting to me as a kid, man. Like you would just throw it didn't matter. Like, even if you didn't have a shot, just being able to put your fish up there next to the contender, I love that. Yeah. I remember one time I was a little kid, I like had this little, the sea bass. I gave it to them and then they dropped the pool winner off it and my sea bass was like, Woo! Right over the side. <laughs> the no, it stayed in the boat. <laughs> it would have been funnier if it went over the side. It would have been hilarious if it just <laughs> launched right in the air and went the drink. <laughs> this one? Not yet. Wait, wait, so this is, this is you right here? Yeah. That's me. And this is another guy caught in the back of the boat? All right. The scales of justice, man. The scales of justice. Oh. oh. All right, all right. So it's down to me and Cheech. Come on. So that's Anthony's fish right Be there. Be heavy. This is my fish right here. Be, yeah, you got it. Ah. He got it. Hey, cut a little bit more of the gill out. He ain't gonna bleed anymore. Let's see, so on to the left. Oh, man. Not even close. I, I cut mine too early. He lost, he lost all his weight. He didn't lose that much weight. <laughs> As we entered Point Judith, the smell of fried seafood wafting over the boat had the pool winnings burning a hole in my pocket. So, when we disembarked, we headed for the nearest seaside clam shack to spend it all on cold drinks and fried shellfish. If you ask me, that's about as close to heaven as bottom fishing can get. <laughs> 